listening to the Humans vs. Retirement podcast with financial planner and retirement specialist, Dan Haylett. In this podcast, Dan explores ways to help you overcome the behavioural, emotional and financial challenges of life after work. Join Dan for the journey where he will explore how our wonderful human brain will naturally fight against what it takes to live a happy, healthy and wealthy retirement. Dan will draw on years of expertise, experience and expert guests to solve the behavioural, emotional and financial challenges of life after work. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Humans vs Retirement podcast. I'm your host, Dan Haylett. Today, I am super excited about the show as I get to talk all things retirement with author, speaker, and renowned expert on retirement lifestyle design all the way from Toronto, Canada, Mike Drack. Mike, a very, very warm welcome to the Humans vs. Retirement podcast. Thank you, Dan. I'm happy to be here. I'm a big fan of yours. I've been following your work, so I'm excited to talk to you about things today. Uh, Vice versa. We're going to get into your wonderful books, and I'm a massive fan of your work too. Um, And and we, we... we hit it off immediately. We connected on LinkedIn, the wonders of social media. Um, we had a conversation um, five or six weeks ago, pre your fishing trip that you take annually, um, which I'm sure we can talk about. Um, we hit it off immediately because when we first spoke th- those few months ago, like your passion, your experience, your knowledge about all of the non-financial elements of retirement was a huge common bond that, that, that we had. Um, so kind of me getting into the books that you've written. So three wonderful books, Mike. Um, The the latest one, Mm -hmm. Longevity Lifestyle by Design, um, your first book, which was Victory Lap Retirement, and then Retirement Heaven and Hell. Those three books, which links to be into the show notes, are, I think, must-reads for for, for everybody thinking uh, about retirement. Um, So, yeah, I I can't wait to, to dive into this conversation. So, Mike, you contribute to a wonderful digital media hub called Baby Boomer uh, for Baby Boomers, sorry, called Booming Encore, um, as well as you know, I think you're the go-to retirement life expert for a number of other high-profile blogs and organisations. So, it puts you in such a wonderful position to have this conversation. And the reason why you're in such a wonderful position is because I think of your background and what you personally went through. Um, you know, j- during the last 10, 15 years. And I'd love for you to share your story and journey with the listeners because I think it will resonate with any potential experiences that they're facing at the moment or maybe thinking about, um, you know, some of the issues that they're thinking about going forward. So I- I'd love for you to-, to kind of share that story with us. Well, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed about my story, Dan, because it, it didn't work out the way I thought it would. Uh, I thought retirement would be easy. I thought retirement was a no-brainer. I worked in the banking industry for 38 years in total, and my wife's an investment advisor as well in Toronto. So we had all this knowledge, and we were guiding clients and things like that, really helping them save as much money as possible for retirement. I think that was our primary goal. And then when it happened to me, when I retired, I was surprised because I I failed miserably at it. And I started suffering from retirement shock, which wasn't a lot of fun. And uh, I couldn't understand why that was happening because I believed that retirement had to do with saving as much money as possible. That was was the goal for everyone. And I found out that retirement uh, is much more complicated than that. And there's a lot of other challenges that that we face that we're not aware of, like, uh, you know, finding new purpose, uh, finding a good reason to get out of bed in the morning and finding productive, meaningful things to do in retirement, things like that. So, no, I I, I, uh, had a rough time for the longest time. And I'm not the only one that suffers from this thing because research has shown that up to one in three retirees will suffer from retirement shock, also known as depression. Uh, My father suffered from it, and I had a good friend die from it. He ended up drinking himself to death because none of us could cope with all these changes in our life, and we didn't know how to handle 
I think it's so it, it, it's so important. I think to recognise the the challenges of of that transition from a career, because, like you say, I think we float into it in a way that we think it's just it's a money problem. So once the money thing is sorted out, um, everything else will take care of itself. I, I, and and like you, I, I can't, I can't. Well, it, it couldn't be further from the truth, right? That's right. Uh, yeah, and that that was the thing I woke up to finally, and I said, "Wow, like whoever thought it's so much more complicated. It's not just something you can fall into and expect to have a happy retirement because you happen to have a lot of money." It's so much more involved with that. And there's another key areas that you have to address. And I, I learned from that. Uh, but I had no idea about it uh, before. And it, it was the weirdest thing because I really wanted to leave my work. I reached a point where I was stressed out. I was working a lot of hours. And uh, I said I had enough and I got to get out of here. And so I was happy to retire. I thought, geez, it's going to be a wonderful thing, but it was anything but. And within a few months, I found myself in retirement, Hal, and it was a lot of fun being there. And what really bothered me was that no one could understand what I was going through. Like my uh, my wife, she's pretty sharp. She didn't understand it. And none of my friends could understand it because everyone automatically thinks, well, how can Mike be unhappy because he doesn't have to work anymore? And the reason I was happy, unhappy, was because I wasn't working anymore. Mm. So that that was one thing that I really woke up to, and I finally figured out what was causing it. We can we can go through that if you like. Yeah. What well, um, what was the first book, Mike, that you that you wrote? The first one was Victory Lap Retirement, Victory Lap. and yeah, really, yeah. it's 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 it was written as I was trying to figure. Mm. out this thing I was experiencing and how I could come up with solutions that would work for me. And that went on to retirement, heaven or hell. I got into the real meat of it, uh, what was bothering me and what I needed to do to recover from that and, and transition to a successful retirement. So mm. it was all based on my feelings and experiences and what I found out over time. I, I read every retirement book I could get my hands on during that period. And I was really disappointed because, Dan, you know, 99% of them only dealt with the money side of retirement. And none of the books, you know, give me, gave me any guidance with, well, this is what you're going to do in retirement. Here are some options for you and things like this. And, uh, yeah, so there was a noted absence of that. And that's why I struggled, too, because there was no good guidance out there available at the time. I think what I really appreciate about what, you know, kind of the journey that you've been on and the experiences that you've shared is your openness in 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 kind of, you know, getting this out into the world for the benefit of of everybody. And your your last book, the the the, um, the Longevity Lifestyle by Design, not only is that your opinions and and some of your learnings, but there's research baked into this now. There's you know there's evidence that you've come across having um, wrote for and spent time with many other retirees and you know and your work trying to impact them, which is now shaping this. I think in a lot more years, you said there's now lots of research around retirement shock. There's lots of yeah. research around. Um, how losing our identity can kind of, you know, make us fall into to those, ca- you know, the, the the stuff behind retirement shock, which you know, which you di- you you dive into. I- I'd love to just get your your opinion on on that specifically. Um, you know, what, what what is your definition of retirement shock? What are some of the signs to look out for uh, for people that kind of maybe um, just retire? And is there ways that we can kind of um, Get, get thinking slightly differently to, to help us um, get out of that. Okay, so uh, the signs to look for if, if you su- suspect someone's re- being impacted by retirement shock is that uh, they'll just spend a lot of time sitting around moping. 
They'll spend a lot of time sitting in front of the TV, but they can't find anything interesting to watch, even though they might have 500 stations to choose from. People that used to love to do certain things like going out and riding a bike or traveling, and they don't want to do these things anymore. Basically, they just want to sit there, isolate themselves, and feel sorry for themselves and mope. And that's it's hard to break out of that by yourself uh, because no one understands what you're going through. And that's where I spent a lot of time and research to say, okay, what's causing this to happen to me? What's driving me to feel like this? And how can I recover from it and get out of it as quickly as possible? Because I, I'm sure you read many stories these days. People, uh, retirees actually end up committing suicide because it's so hard for them to, to, to kind of dig out of that hole they find themselves. And they don't understand why, why that is happening to them. They can't understand because they might have a lot of money. They had a great life or a su- successful career before. And all of a sudden, they're sitting there and they're feeling sorry for themselves and they can't understand why. And what is happening is, and and, uh, I was surprised to learn this, is that we all have these basic fundamental needs. Uh, And, you know, their needs for like a need for survival, security, a need for connection, social interaction, a need for growth, a need for giving, a need for structure and routine, a need for variety in our lives. And most of these needs were being satisfied through the work we did before. I never thought about that. And then what happens is, is when we leave that work behind, we need to find new ways of satisfying these needs of ours, or we're going to be in trouble. And you're going to end up suffering from retirement shock. And the interesting thing is, is that we're all born with these same needs. The only difference between people is some needs might be stronger than others. But these needs are, are, are with us for the duration. So just because you're retired doesn't mean these needs are going to go away. And when you leave work, be fine. You have to find new ways of satisfying these needs. Or again, you're going to be in trouble and you're going to be miserable. And that's exactly what happened to me. It made so much sense when I finally figured it out. And one of the easiest ways of meeting these needs is by working part-time retirement. Because you're bringing that structure and you're bringing the social connection, all those things back into your life. But the proviso is, and I keep telling people is, make sure you find part-time work that you love to do. That's interesting that you have some passion for. And when you do that, life, uh, you know, you take it to a whole new level and it's just wonderful. And thank God I'm finally there, Dan. (laughs) Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you, uh, you're what you you know. You, you've definitely found your purpose. I think you can. You can. I can hear it in your writing. That I, I don't. I don't read it. I can hear it. If that makes sense. I can, you know. You can hear the passion in the words. Definitely. Um, I think there's a couple of observations that I'd like to make there and, and circle back to a few things you said. Like I, I think um, in amongst kind of retirement aged people, let's say 55 plus in the 60s. There's lots of things on the rise in those people, and there's lots of things happening at a more rapid rate than other age groups, such as depression, suicide, divorce. Um, you know, you, you kind of mention these things and it, without kind of going majorly deep, but I think a lot of that comes back to this. You know, the, the loss of the loss of the things that gave us the foundational elements to our being. Um, you know, and, and and I think it, particularly in the UK, the fastest rising age group for divorce is is people in their sixties, um, sure. and uh, you know, and I think that I suppose one of the things I I, I want to kind of come back to is, and I know I, you know I know that you're not a fan of, and for all the absolute right reasons that I agree with, this kind of cliff edge retirement thing. It's stop work one day, on the sofa the next, oh. um, you know, because that can lead to, to to real issues. So the bit about work and I think associating work with money, we need to kind of maybe um, – we, we need to get rid of that association because if you're financially independent, work doesn't have to pay you, but it can. Um, 
And so, so really, how do you think about crafting the process of retirement and starting to think about what you'd want post full time work in, as you quite delightfully put it, in your second life? Um, you know, how we, a lot of people kind of wait; they they do it three months out, but I think that's far too late, right? You know, we need to start crafting this well before that. This takes time, and I. I... I suggest two to three years before you retire, you should start to sit down and go through it and, and design a retirement lifestyle that will work for you. Hmm. Uh, it's important to understand that uh, not all retirees are the same and what kind of lifestyle will work for me might not work for you. It's, uh, it has to be customized based on your strongest needs again and your wants. Uh, and it, it takes a, a lot of work to do it. But once it's done... Uh, you have something definite to retire to, something to look forward to. And yeah, life is pretty good. But uh, you mentioned about uh, about depression and people and divorce rates and things like that. And uh, what I found interesting was uh, the pandemic taught us a lot about retirement. Absolutely. And the same thing with divorce rates happened during the pandemic. Because when restraints were lifted, a lot of couples divorced because they couldn't handle the increased togetherness. Well, guess what happens in retirement? There's a lot of togetherness <laughs> yeah. and you don't yeah. have these jobs anymore. So you're, yeah. you're together a lot more yeah. and people have a hard time handling that. And another problem is, is in, in the book, we identify different types of uh, retirees based on their strongest needs. So if you're two different types of retirees, like one might be comfort oriented, maybe they just want to hang around the house and take it easy and not travel and, you know, just enjoy a simple life. And, the you know, your spouse might be someone that wants to, you know, experience new things, travel to different countries, take up new hobbies, maybe Zumba or ballroom dancing, and you don't want any part of it. Well, guess what? You're going to have a problem. Mm. And this is something you need to work through. And it happens a lot. Mm. And it's just having respect for one another's needs and to say, okay, I understand that. I'll accommodate those, but you have to accommodate my needs too. So we can have our own separate lives and then have a life where we do things together. And that's so important to understand. And that's, you know, what we tried to bring out in the book, you have to understand what is happening to you when you retire in these challenges that everyone will face. Absolutely. I think it's such an important point, one that's raised on a, on, on a number of, of the episodes of the show. And I, look, I think, um, as you rightly said, Mike, this is about creating probably three journeys or three visions, you know, individual ones and a joint one. Um, but, but I think... Right. You know, the, the trouble I find is that it comes back to the money thing. There's often been a dominant spouse when it comes to the finances. Um, and right. that dominant spouse then often gets dominant in the non financial things. It's kind of like, the, right, so I've been dominant on the money. So therefore, I'm going to start to tell you what the retirement looks like and you're just going to come along for the ride. And I think, again, that's really dangerous. And it, it only, only is a, a, a strong word, but, you know, communication openness and conversations can 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 get round this right because it doesn't have to be like that and um I, i'm you know so i think it's such a crucial point if if anyone that is thinking about entering into the period of crafting their retirement and you're married or you've got a long term you know a long term partner this has to be together it has That's to right. be together but you see, a lot of men ignore that fact. Yep, absolutely. A lot of men will just craft their own uh, lifestyle based on their own wants. Mm. And they'll forget about their partner. And that's when problems happen. Right? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, you have to be careful about it. And it comes down to respect and open communication. Right? Yep. End of the day. You. I think what's a really good place to go now is you mentioned it a little a little bit there about that you know you, you've discovered um, five types of retirees um, that I would really want us to kind of explore because I think it comes off the back of this conversation. I think understanding what type of retiree you are 
and what type of retiree your partner or spouse is, is a really crucial element to under, to crafting the vision and living the life that that you want to live. Can we delve into that? You've mentioned a couple of them, but I think all of them are so relevant and so great. And I would imagine everyone listening will go, yeah, I'm one of those um, as we go through them. <laughs> all right. Let's start with uh, uh, the comfort-oriented uh, retiree, uh, people I refer to as relaxers. Their probably biggest goal in life was to reach the retirement uh, finish line. And now that they've reached they have that, they'll never re, uh, work again. They just want to enjoy a simple life and take it easy. They don't want to take any risks. They want to stay in their comfort zone, do the things that they're used to. They hate change. They just want to keep doing the same things over and over again. And that type of lifestyle works for them. And there's a lot of them out there. These are the people that would never read my books because they don't need to. They know exactly what they want, and they're going to keep doing that. Uh, every day will look the same, and they're okay with that. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as it works for them, and it does. So you have to be careful. I can't look down on them and say, well, that's a bad lifestyle. Sure, it's maybe a lifestyle that won't work for me, but it works for them, and I have to respect that. And there's a lot of people out there like that. Uh, and my mother was one too. She was a comfort oriented retiree and she enjoyed life. And her biggest, uh, probably purpose was to take care of her friends and family and, and make sure everyone was uh, safe. Right. So that worked for her, but I could never live like that. You know, I'm a growth oriented retiree. I need to keep uh, learning and experiencing new things. I need to, cut, to keep setting goals for myself. Uh, when people refer to me as retired, it drives me crazy because I'm anything but. I don't know exactly what I am, but I'm not retired. And I need identity around something. So what did I do? I became an author, a public speaker. I attempted to become an Iron Man and things like that because I need to... Keep challenging myself. Keep taking risks because that's where the fun is for people like me. And so they're, they're an exciting uh, group of people. I refer to them as retirement rebels because they threw out the old retirement rule book and they're, they're doing all these wild and crazy things. Like you read these stories. I find them fascinating. There's a story about Eleanor. She wanted to celebrate her 100th, 100th birthday. So what did she decide to do? Try skydiving for the first time. I can imagine her talking to her friends at the retirement home saying, you know what, I think tomorrow I'm going to go up and try skydiving. You want to come along with me? And then I'll be going, oh, no, I don't want any part of that. Well, she yeah. went out and did it. Yeah. And she's done it a few times since. And what I find interesting is that there's another lady in Australia who beat Eleanor's record because she did her first skydive at age 102. So you have these people, they're challenging each other. They're looking at these things that other uh, retirement rebels are doing, and they're trying to one-up them and, and do all these wild and crazy things. And it's just, I have so much fun reading about them. And these are the people, mm -hmm. too, I refer to as late bloomers. What they did was they left work behind, and they decided to try something completely new and different. These are the people you see opening new businesses and things like that, or become master athletes uh, and compete uh, in their 80s, 90s, and even hundreds. I find mm. their stories fascinating. So I get very excited about them. And then the other ones that, uh, that um, I have a lot of respect for are the givers. These are are people that have a strong need to get to give back and help others and we saw examples of this during the pandemic you know people would volunteer to work at hospitals at uh, you know at um, uh, charity uh, things and uh, maybe they would volunteer to help out their elderly neighbors who were too scared to go shopping for themselves for fear of ca uh, catching a virus 
So you see these people, you know, giving back and doing so many good things. And, uh, you know, those are the ones that get me excited also. And then you have the unicorns, which can be a combination of both growth and giver. And that's kind of where I fall. I found that as I go through retirement, it's not so much about, you know, making money anymore. It's about finding ways to give back. And I have a lot of fun doing that. And that led to the decision of giving our, our third book, Longevity Lifestyle by Design, away for free to everyone. Because we want to help as many people as possible. And that's part of that giving back. And those are all needs of mine. Mm. And, you know, these needs are driving each of these different types of retirees. So it's, mm. it's important to understand the differences and to understand what's driving certain individuals uh, in retirement because it makes retirement lifestyle design that much easier. It's fasc- it just fascinates me that the whole, uh, and I think we, we had a conversation before, before we hit record just today. And um, I, I definitely think there is an uprising and, and you know, a, a definite trend that the modern day retiree is much more growth focused and growth orientated than than right. past generations and i think um kind of I, I think we are in that first real generation of retirement rebels you know that that kind of first generation because i think when when i listen to the people i work with they talk about their parents and their grandparents very differently to the way that they want to retire. So, you know, their their parents and their grandparents had um, maybe not as much money, but the 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 money they had was very different. I.e., it was um, they didn't have pots of money. They had you know final salary or defined benefit pensions that give them a regular right. income. So they designed their life differently. You know, there wasn't the um, the world wasn't as 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 uh, as small as it is now for, for for generations past. You know, you know the the traveling, and and the experiences that you can now do, and how easy it, the barriers to entry for businesses and creatives and all of that stuff um, is so small now that I think, you know, we we need to now really understand how those growth orient growth orientated retirees um, uh, work how they, uh, what their emotions are, how we can start to communicate with them and understand them better. Because that's where I think a lot of these people are going to, uh, you know, a lot of people that want to retire are going to fit squarely into that into that camp. Well, yeah, and, and to me, i got to be careful how I say this. I find those to be the interesting types. Those are the people I want to deal with because they get me excited and they show me what's possible. The game changer here was longevity. You way back when, you know, people would retire and they wouldn't expect to live that long and they would adopt this uh, sedentary lifestyle, which was a killer in disguise. And we've woken up to it that we say, okay, you know, we could have 20, 30 plus years to spend in retirement. And that's a lot of time. And mm-hmm. what are we going to do to, you know, to give us purpose what what are we going to do to get us excited and you know get us happy and things like that and these are what the growth oriented people focus on and saying hey life is far from over it's my uh, turn to have some fun and i'm going to have fun doing this Mm. and that's when they start breaking the rules and it's so it's so exciting to see what some of these people are accomplishing and they're, you know, they're having so much fun doing it. And then again, happy people live longer than unhappy people. It was proven by the famous nun study. And even mm-hmm. from the blue zones, you see all these people that live lo- a long life. They have a strong sense of purpose throughout that life. Mm-hmm. And many times that purpose uh, I include some form of work. You know, the work might be taking care of the grandkids like many people did during the pandemic, right? That gave them a strong sense of purpose and it benefited their, their kids, right? And uh, I think we're getting back to more of that, which is kind of interesting to see. Uh, absolutely. And I think, you know, what, what it's definitely changed the game. The longevity thing, it's kind of, you know, as I say, going back to the conversations I have with the people I work with, they're talking about their grandparents, but 
that was a five year retirement. You know, you, you basically That's worked right. until you you worked until you couldn't work anymore physically, and then you went and stopped and just declined. Um, and so it's very different now. But also, I think what people are, and I think where the rebelness is coming in is the you know people are now i think much more aware of the difference between health span and lifespan and i think they're going you know yet you know medicine is keeping us alive longer um which means that you know that the longevity is there but we still have our health span to consider i.e we need to take advantage whilst we're probably within those first stages of retirement because Although we might be alive longer, we may we may not be able to do all the things that are on our in our head when we're in our eighties. Notwithstanding that there are people at age one hundred doing skydive, so there are you know there, 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 <laughs> there, there are the, the people are breaking the rules all over the place. But I think in general, I think that's what people are going now. They're going well. I know I'm living longer. However, I want to do stuff, and then that's where the issues lie. It's the issue between purpose, passion. What, what they want to do, how they want to do it, and then the fact that they know that they're living longer. So the, the kind of financial element has to support something up here. Right. Um, yeah. you know, and, that's where the, and I think that's where that group of people that you said, Mike, is truly exciting because they, they absolutely want to live life to the maximum and they absolutely need some guidance and help to, to, to kind of do that. And when they get that guidance and help and it does change their lives, that's where kind of my eyes light up and I and and, and I really kind of see the impact that um that, that we can have on on those type of people. No, no, you made some very good points. And one thing we do focus on is narrowing that gap between health span and lifespan. I think uh age works, uh, Ken Dykewald did a study and they showed the gap in the States is twelve point four years. Mm. So, you know, imagine you, you have this 12.4 years tacked on the end of your life where you're going to spend it in poor health and you can't do the things that you love to do. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're coaching people to say, okay, wake up. Instead of sitting on a couch, get yourself to a gym, start doing weight training, resistance training, get in a pool and start swimming do some aerobic activity, get your 10,000 steps in because we want to have a healthy, long life and we want to reduce that. I refer to it as pushing back your best before date right to the end, maybe mm. the day before your final day hits. Mm. That's mm. the goal that we all want. Mm. The, the other thing you, you picked up was retirement cash flow. Like if you want to do all these great things, it costs money. And how are we going to generate that kind of money? Well, that's where it makes sense to go back and maybe work part time mm. uh, to generate some of it. But the, the thing is, in retirement, you know, you, you're you can pick a job that maybe doesn't pay as well as your 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 former job did because you don't need that much really to get by in addition to your other retirement assets. So that's where you kind of come up with this lifestyle that will work and that uh, that's sustainable because you don't want to go through a lifestyle decline. You don't want to experience that too. You're pinned down. You can't do these things that you like to do because through a lack of money. So yeah. th those are things we're very cognizant of and we're, and we're focused on, right? I want to, I think this leads beautifully on to um, kind of what, you've observed through your writing and your speaking and your coaching with, with people in relation to what retirees lose and how to think about replacing it in a way that fits beautifully in line with you know their thought process around what they want to do and what's important to them um, and i think that would lead on to then probably realizing that working in retirement is something that makes a huge amount of sense because you've identified the things that you're going to lose. You kind of know how to replace them. Couple that with a new vision about what gets you out of bed in the morning and what lights your fire. I think for the first right. time in a number of years, you've got the opportunity to marry those things up. And I know we're both big fans of Vicky Gee, which which kind of can help you marry those those things up, right? So I'd love to get your thoughts around what you think people lose and um, 
and how we start to think about replacing them and some of the mechanics of doing that? Well, you know, what we lose is basically what I said before. We lose, you know, structure and routine. We've always had that throughout our lives. Even when we went to school, we had structure mm. and routine. And all of a sudden that's thrown away. And uh, then we lose social connection, which is so very important to us. And that's one of the big dangers is many people end up isolating themselves in retirement. And that's a danger in, in terms of longevity. You want to die sooner, uh, you know, isolate yourself and see what happens to you. Mm. And, you know, we, we experienced it during the pandemic, too, when we couldn't go out and see people. And we couldn't hug them. We couldn't hold their hand. And Zoom calls just, you know, couldn't make up the difference, right? It's just not the same. And the other thing is, uh, it's very important, a, a source of meaning in our lives, a source of value in our lives, a sort of being relevant, being a contributor in our lives. We lose that too when we retire and we have to find a way of replacing it. I've had many people tell me they, they feel irrelevant in retirement. They feel like they're starting to become invisible, that no one sees them anymore. No one hears them anymore. And it's sad to hear people talk about that. Mm. And uh, so those are things that we can switch around by mm. finding new sources of purpose. And I refer to work as not just paid work, but volunteer work as well. It's still work at the end of the mm. day. One you get paid for, one that you don't get paid for. But uh, they're, they're both some very meaningful activities that people are starting to wake up to. But, you know, the struggle is trying to connect people to a good source of volunteer work. You know, you don't want to be stuck in some basement somewhere with no windows, you know, licking envelopes, sending out requests for donations or things like that. You want to be able to see the impact you're making, the impact on people's lives. Like a good example is Habitat for Humanity. You go and help build a house that you know uh, a deserving uh, couple are going to live in. That's very meaningful volunteer work, and it helps keep people alive, and it gives them that purpose. Everyone needs a good reason to get out of bed in the morning, purpose. Our old purpose used to be making money, working, so we could take care of our families. That's what got us out of bed uh, in all those mornings, even when we didn't want to, because that was our driving force. And when the kids leave home or we leave the job behind, What's our new purpose? We need to find it. And uh, that's uh, something a lot of people struggle with. The reason I, I also decided to read the books was at one point I was a retirement coach. And I would have all these people come in to talk to me, and they were all suffering from retirement shock. And I felt like the exorcist trying to get all these demons out of the yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And I said, this is crazy. And it was mm. so hard because it took a lot out of me. Cause I could feel mm. for them. I was mm. there. I was them. I've been through it. And I said, no, no, we got to nip this thing in the bud. Let's educate people and create awareness before they actually retire. Mm. And we can, we can uh, help them avoid that. And that's been my... I guess you could say my calling now is to help these people avoid what I went through. Yeah. And what a calling that is, right? Oh, well, it's, it's exciting. It's like your calling too. You're helping an awful lot of people, you know, save and prepare for eventual retirement. And, you know, you understand all these challenges they're going to be facing. They're going to be facing and you're helping them prepare for it and come up with a good plan for themselves. So, no, it's great work to do. Absolutely. And I think I think, you know, one of the um what what one of the interesting things that I really like to talk to people about, and you you mentioned it, is this I think there's too much focus on what people are retiring from and not what they're retiring to. And I think simple conversations about, you know, what they're going to do, what it means, aligning with their some of their purposes and passions because i do you know i do think people have somewhat maybe squirreled away some of their dreams and desires right to to to, to a lesser or greater degree and and and, and you know i want to feel like we can we can encourage that to come out and start to dream again and start to think because i think 
I think more and more and more people, particularly these growth orientated retirees that want to continuously learn and educate and grow, you know, mentally, um, spiritually, that work provides so much stuff, but it doesn't mean that it has to be the thing that you've left. It can be the thing that you really want to do. Um, and I think That's just right. kind of, you know, getting that out of people is really exciting because you can see it lights them up. It's like, well, I never thought I could do this thing that I've always wanted to do. Um, but now I feel like I can. Uh, and 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 that lights people up. And I think uh, in your book, Mike, you've got a great bit at the back where there's you, you've obviously curated and found so much resource for, for people. Um, and there's not enough, but there's a lot of resource out there. And I think people don't quite understand what's out there. There's, you know, organizations like Men's Shed and, as you said, kind of volunteer, you know, volunteering organizations. There's wonderful blogs that you are contributed to. There's 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 better books now uh, that, that are out there. There's people talking about this stuff, um, you know. So I think... I think that is a big thing, and and the sense that it's coming around is that that more, there's more and more resource for people to tap into and find some of these organisations and resources that will help them through this journey. Yeah, you know, it's uh, there's a couple of things I'm excited about, and and one of the the big ones is these new transition courses some of the universities are coming up with world they'll bring retirees in and you can sign up for this course and over the course of uh 12 months you can figure out what your new purpose will be uh and they help facilitate that so what you do is you you know you join together with say four 40 other retiree students and you're all working on defining new purpose for yourself and at the end of the program you actually go up and present what your plan is for the future. So, cool. so maybe your plan is to start a new business or your plan is to create this new uh, type of volunteer work that uh, you're going to pursue for the rest of your life. And I find that so exciting. And what I really like is because when I started it and I decided, okay, I'm going to write books and whatnot, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to create a website. I didn't know how to, you know, sell books on social media and things like that. And what these universities are doing, they're going to provide these supporting courses to help people do that. And it makes it so much easier. So really they're connecting these people and they're helping them find new purpose. And so when they actually start retirement, they can hit the ground running. I think it's, it's so wonderful. What, concerns me is when I talk to retirees uh, with my wife, some of my wife's clients, the first question I ask them is, why are you retiring? And it's it, few people have a good reason. They think, oh, I'm supposed to retire now. Yeah. I'm 65, Mike. I should stop. <laughs> yeah, 65 government pension. I got to retire. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's not a good reason. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't you like your work anymore? Are you stressed out at your job? Do you need to get away from it for health reasons? That makes sense to me. But mm. just to automatically think you have to retire, it's not a good answer. And mm. then the second question I like to ask is to say, what, what's your vision for retirement? What are you going to do in retirement? And that's when you get that deer in the headlight look and they kind of go, uh, mm, uh, we're going to travel more. Or we're going to spend more time with the grandkids. Well, I'm sorry. That's not going to fill up your day in your weeks, in your years. You got to think these things through. And it's just like, a, you know, a lack of thought, a lack of planning. And that's a scary thing. Mm. And, you know, the third question is, what are you going to do with your remaining time? What mm. are you going to do for the next 30 years? What's your plan? Again, silence. And, you know, these are the things that we help people deal with because these yeah. are big questions. These are the big rocks of retirement that few people think about. I think I, I, I heard a few years ago um, a, 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 a quote and it just sat with me because I think it's so true. I think most people will spend more time planning a two-week holiday or vacation 
than they do spending a time planning a 20 year retirement. Um, and I think it's it's so true, right? You, you know, it's so true. And I think we, we need to, I think in order to create the positive, we need to address the negative. Because I think too many people think it is just a walk in the park. But yeah. if we address all the reasons why it isn't before it happens and then help people realize how they can get over that, then the 20, 30 years is going to be a joy for them to to to, to be in. It's not all bed and rose, you know, bed of roses. And there are challenges that will will come about, right? But I think, you know, lack of planning, I see it so many times. I see that what you said, people go, um, you know, we need to start planning for for retirement. I'm 62. Oh, why? You know, and I ask that question. Why do you want to retire? Oh, because I'm 62, and I feel well. What, <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason. Yeah, and 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 you go what? And I ask the question. Do you not like what you do? Then they go. Oh no, I really love it. Oh well, this don't compute. I don't understand them. What's this about? So like, oh. think think about going. Well, if time is more important to you, and you want to do, you've got some things that you want to do, and you need more time. Well, then go to four days a week or three days a week because you're in, yeah. your, your employer is absolutely open to those conversations, by the way. You know, they don't want to lose people. Out, you got me all wound up now. Dan. <laughs> let's go there. Let's, let's go there, Mike. No, but you see people, ah, they're so passive. You know, you love to do your work. Well, keep doing it. Maybe not as, as for as many hours. Yep. But keep doing what you love to do. It's crazy to retire from doing something that you love to do. But you have to be engaged. You have to be involved. You got to go talk to the employer and say, let's make a deal that works for both of us. Mm -hmm. So we both win on this deal. And I don't know. People are afraid to have these conversations. I don't understand it. It drives yeah. me nuts because when they have these conversations, they tend to work out. Absolutely. Because it's like I said, it's a win-win. I'll tell you one story that, you know, is part of what got me doing what I do is uh, I dealt with a lot of small business owners back in commercial banking. And uh, I remember, you know, one person that, uh, you know, was able in his, his uh, 60s, he sold his business for a lot of money. And uh, he thought, oh, geez, life's going to be wonderful now. I got all this money in the bank. I said, what are your plans for retirement? And he said, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'll just kind of figure it out as it goes. And I said, boy, this guy is going to struggle. And he did. And he ended up passing away within a couple of years of retiring. Because what happened is he spent all his time at work. He didn't have any other activities or hobbies or anything like that. His work was his hobby. His work was his passion and his purpose. That was it. And when he gave up that work, he sold it off. He had nothing to fill it. And then his needs weren't being met and things like that. And things started to fall apart for him because, you know, that, that lack of purpose is a killer. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it, it, will, it will hurt a lot of people. And that's why it's important. That's why I have this, you know, passion in me to go out and, and talk to people about it. Mm -hmm. Because it happens more often than you think. There's so many successful people that have made a lot of money that will struggle terribly in retirement because they can't find an alternative source of good purpose for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a sad thing to, to see. And it's through a lack of preparation and awareness again. And yep. this is where I'm looking for the financial planning industry uh, and the investment advisors to educate their clients. This is part of what I do, and I'm hoping to make change. But it's it's not easy to make change in the financial services industry. And that's why I'm so happy when I see individuals like you, you know, doing the great things you do and helping all these people because they need a lot of help and guidance. I think one of the things that I, I, I try and – get across to people is you know i mean i work with amazing people people that have had long successful careers either owned their own business or you know had careers that they've you know that, that they've loved and been very successful at 
and and you've accumulated years of knowledge and wisdom and understanding that you need to continue to give back to the world, right? Whether you mentor young people, whether you go and do consultative work, I think too many people downplay because they feel like, oh, I've got to an age, I can't contribute anymore. Actually, no. the world needs you more than ever. You, your your skills right. are so vital to contributing to society. And, and also one of the other things I think that, you know, research is out there now that if you as a 65, let's say 60, 65 year old, hang out with some 20, 25, 30 year olds, actually that's a really good place to be. You don't have to hang out and socialize with everybody in your age group. Be diverse, socialize with younger people and therefore those social connections can only make this better and happier. And we love giving yeah. back and we loved it. So I think it's such an important, we need to give, you know, people that are retiring from a career need to give themselves more credit for the things that they've got in, in their heads and the ability for them to then use that stuff to give back. Whether you get paid for it or not is irrelevant, but use that stuff to give back because that can generate some of the purpose that you need. So that uh, that is something that my father experienced when he retired. Uh, like I said before, he suffered from a retirement shock for the longest time until he went out and found himself a part-time job. And when I found about the type of part-time job he used, he found a laugh because it was so crazy. He got a part-time job delivering pet food for one of those retail pet food companies. And his job was to, you know, pick up the pet food orders and put them in a van, drive around town two days a week and deliver this pet food to people that couldn't come into the store. But uh, as soon as he started doing that job, he was a changed person. The retirement shock was gone because he found himself new purpose. And when I think about his former job, where he managed about 50 people in a large corporation and accounting department, it was such a huge change, mm -hmm. but it was just a ticket for him. Mm -hmm. And what the icing on the cake was, is that the young man who owned the store was struggling. It was his first business. And my father turned into a mentor for him. So he used his accounting skills and his sales skills and he, he, he taught the young man to uh, run a successful business. And when the young man thanked him, that was like a million bucks for my father. Absolutely. Talk about meaning. Talk mm -hmm. about feeling valued. Talk about raising your self-esteem. Because mm -hmm. he could use his old skills to help others. That's as simple as it is. It's exactly what you said. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful place for us to think about wrapping this up. It's, we, we could talk for about another 52 minutes. I'm just looking at the time here. So this has been so cool. Maybe there's a part two coming up once I finish your other two books and we can have a look and explore some of those. Um, but I've got a couple of questions I'd love to ask you, Mike, just to kind of get some of your thoughts. bit, you know, short, rapid fire type stuff. So we, we, we go through this. You've already answered it a little bit, but what, what does Mike's retirement look like? Mike's retirement is changing. I'm going more from making to giving. And, uh, you know, if you follow me, you can see there's a lot of things that I'm starting just to give away and contribute to help others, like giving away a free book. And there's a bunch of other things I'm going to be doing in the, in the years ahead because somehow I think we're all wired to give and it just takes us a while to get there. And retirement is when your chance, when you can fulfill that, that important need of yours. And that, that's where I am. And I'm having a lot of fun doing that. What would be your number one tip? If, if, if I was sitting across the desk from you, um, let's, let, let's kind of say you and your wife are, are my advisors and retirement coaches, and I'm sitting across the desk and I'm, we've established the money thing's fine. Right? We're not talking about the, the numbers or the spreadsheets anymore. What would be your number one tip to live a happy, healthy, and wealthy retirement? I would use my retirement as a stepping stone to something better. So I'm not stopping. I'm not really retiring. I'm doing something else, something that's very meaningful to me, something that maybe I wanted to do when I was younger and never had a chance to because I had to work full time. So this opens a lot of doors for me. And this is what I talked about, late bloomers. I'm a late bloomer. 
I'm doing things that I never had a chance to do, and I'm having so much fun doing it. So it's a period of exploration. It's a period of creativity. It's a period for having a lot of fun. This is the payoff from working all those years. So take advantage of it. That's what I would tell people. And don't stop. Mike, you, you've, I think you've in in that answer, you've answered my other question. So we're going to that's a wonderful place for us for, for us to finish. And I think um, I think if 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 the listeners kind of do that um, rewind thirty second button, that last thirty seconds that you just said, I think is just a phenomenal uh, takeaway for, for for people that that are listening here. So, look, Mike, I cannot thank you enough for your time, your knowledge, your wisdom. Uh, your words they're just it's, it's been it's been so good and thank you for, for sharing all of that today i've had i've had such a great time and such a lot of fun so did i dan i really enjoyed being on and i, I like talking to people that get it and obviously you get it and you get it well so thank you i appreciate that uh look, links to all of mike's books um, the, the other resources, the, the great articles that he writes will all be in the show notes. And I encourage everybody, you know, Mike's giving this stuff away now. So, um, you know, the longevity lifestyle by design is a wonderful book. One of the best retirement books that I've read. So I encourage everybody to go and, and get that and help Mike on his mission to, um, impact as many retirees as possible. Um, so that just leaves me to thank everybody once again for listening to the humans versus retirement podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you alongside us today until next time. Take care. Thank you for listening to the humans versus retirement podcast subscribe to be notified when new episodes become available we would love to have you along for the journey if you like what you heard then we would appreciate you taking a few minutes to leave us a review and lastly if you want to explore your retirement plans further download our free seven step retirement gps toolkit linked in the show notes the information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of tfp or dan haylett This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice, so please always seek the advice of professionals with any questions you may have regarding your retirement.